Well, welcome back. We're going to pick up where we left off, and that is looking at the um, uh, formulating a risk. And we're going to start off, this is really the first of six videos, we're going to start off by looking at risk statements and what goes into a risk statement and what are some of the characteristics associated with that. Um, and again, this material is based on the uh, excellent textbook by uh, Wheeler, uh, Security Risk Management, and we're covering at this point Chapter 5. All right, so here are the kind of uh, lesson objectives that we have. We're going to start off with this idea of redefining, uh, reviewing, if you will, risk, threat, sensitivity, vulnerability, severity, and likelihood. We're then going to go on to uh, look at uh, building a risk statement. In fact, we're going to use Telnet, uh, Telnet example, to really dig in hard and make sure that you're comfortable with risk statements. From there, we're going to look at threats and that threat component associated uh, with uh, building a risk statement, and we'll look at some of the threat registries that are out there. After that, we'll move into a series of additional readings that explore risk analysis, expected loss, quantitative uh, uh, analysis, um, and how they tie back into these risk statements and the formulation thereof. But let's start with, if you will, the meat and the potatoes, the, the, the core concept here, which is building a risk statement. And to do so, we need to understand a couple of key definitions. We'll start with sensitivity. So what's the value associated uh, with uh, a resource and as it relates to their tolerance for risk exposure? Okay. And so we're looking at how sensitive is the, uh, the tolerance? Is this something where it's pretty stoic, it's pretty hardened, and there's not a lot of sensitivity? Or is this something that's quite sensitive? and that that value is quite important. We'll look at the severity, which is really <coughs> magnitude or impact associated with a very specific threat, uh, threat and vulnerability pair. And it's key as you're writing these risk statements, we're looking at one threat, one vulnerability paired together to come up with that severity. So that may mean that we've got the same resource with lots of different threat vulnerability pairs being analyzed against it and building risk statements based on that. Likelihood is just the probability that this is going to actually be realized, that threat and that vulnerability are going to occur together. The threat is the who, who's, who's doing this, who is the threat, threat actor. The vulnerability is the weakness. Why are they doing it? They're trying to exploit some weakness in that particular resource. And then the risk is the actual consequences. All right, well, enough with generic definitions. Let's get into a specific example. So, Here's what we're given initially, and we're going to expand on it a little bit, but we've got network administrators that use Telnet to manage network devices and their passwords never expire. So those administrator uh, passwords never expire. If you're not familiar with Telnet, Telnet client is running on a local computer. It is connecting to a Telnet server, and then that server is actually executing programs on that specific server. Um, Telnet passes that information in terms of the request and the response in the clear. There is no encryption uh, taking place as those things go forth. So think in your mind, what's the potential threat? And remember, the threat is the who. Who, who could potentially launch an attack? What's the vulnerability or weakness? There are a couple of them actually mentioned in this. Uh, 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 mentioned uh, in this. And then what's the potential? And, and some of those are implicit. They're not explicit, so you have to think a little bit about it. And then what's the impact to the organization? All right, so it could lead to a risk statement of something like this, all right? Uh, transmitted information like system administrator passwords for production servers are subject to eavesdropping across the network. Access to these passwords could cause a malicious insider to uh, cause an outage of all client-facing services that would last up to 24 hours, okay? So the threat in this case is what? It's that malicious insider. The vulnerability or the weakness is <coughs> transmitting passwords in the clear. And then what's the out uh, the 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 impact or severity? It's an outage of all client facing services that would last up to 24 hours. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, not really. So it, it's an okay uh, risk statement. But, but what you'd like to do is dig in a little bit more. All right, so let's dig in a little bit more on this particular one. Um, here's a definite, def uh, 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 a more, if you will, detailed uh, definition of the vulnerability, a more detailed 
uh, definition of uh, the threat and a more detailed definition of severity. And notice in the case of severity, they, they've added some additional information, which is kind of unfair. Remember, the previous statement said all client-facing services. Uh, in this, you're, you're finding out, hey, we're, we're passing credit card information. So all of that credit card information uh, would be uh, available to see that information. Okay, Likelihood. Uh, again, we're taking that definition and going um, um, the, the, the fact that the passwords never expire allows the chance of interception and successful exploitation to increase over time um, because you're passing it actually in the clear. And then the sensitivity here, again, we're not talking about a client facing um, outage uh, for 24 hours. Remember that was in the original risk. Now that we've narrowed it down to credit card information, we're saying, look, you got to publicly report it. It's going to cost us over a half million dollars. We're going to lose 10% of our clients. That's a different risk statement. Um, and so you can see the differences here associated with it and why you want to tease that out and be very explicit about all of these terms. I'm going to go back a slide. The vulnerability, more clear. Threat, severity, likelihood, and sensitivity. And what you would do is combine all of these into that kind of risk statement. And then that risk statement goes in a risk uh, repository that it's listing all of the different risks associated with a particular organization. Remember, the risk is tied to a threat pair. So this particular system, the Telnet system, actually has multiple vulnerabilities. We're just looking in this particular case at credit card information. There are other types of information that might be passing across that system. And again, you would have different risk uh, statements associated with that in your risk repository. All right, so here's another example of this, and, and, and this is one where I'm not going to give you the answer. I want you to go and explore it, and why don't we use a pretty famous attack? And backup media of a Target store with 20,000 customer records is easily readable. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, again, what is the potential threat? What is the vulnerability? What is the impact to the organization? So, Take some time, think about it, write that statement. And I know in a video it's easy to go, oh, I'm just going to keep moving on. Uh, but take the time to actually do it. If you write the risk statement, you'll get comfortable writing those risk statements and you'll get comfortable with uh, building those. All right, so uh, again, uh, hopefully you, you wrote those down. You could write a very generic one, which is what you've got up top. Here you have a more detailed one at the bottom. Uh, but even the, the detailed one at the bottom probably doesn't go far enough. And uh, what I would suggest is use the approach that we use for Talnet. Go back to each of the, the specific terms, write a sentence or two on each one, and you're going to get a much more detailed risk statement that is easier to understand. All right, well, this finishes up what we were uh, covering, and that is writing risk statements and that kind of review of the... the, the um, core definitions that go into writing a risk uh, statement. What we're going to do in the next video is do this. We're going to get into who or what is the threat and build upon that. So keep on studying, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.